Hello, you're watching the second part in the Contemplating Jesus series and this one, this video will be about how I believe that Jesus Christ redefined success. Now this series was actually inspired at a time when I began to doubt or I began to wonder whether I actually knew Jesus, like Jesus the man, Jesus one on one, not what I had been told or what I had heard from people. You know, I grew up in church and I guess I'd, you think you know everything and you've heard these things over and over again every Sunday and over the years it's like, oh, you already know this. It's like, oh, I know Jesus. He's the only begotten son of God. He came to reconcile man to God. He cleansed from all our sins. I know that's what I would call general knowledge of Jesus Christ. I mean, anybody who attends church on Sundays will know this. And um, I began to think that if I wanted to deepen my relationship with God, if I wanted to, you know, have a closer walk with Jesus, that I have to know, have I would have to, you know, take out time or find a way to get to know him personally for myself, have a personal understanding and a personal revelation of the person of Jesus. And it's been an interesting journey, I think. And it's not as though I've been investing as much as I should in trying to, you know, know Jesus more, but it's been kind of like slow revelation. Not slow, but it's been, it's been like, you know, revelations over time. This particular topic actually started in my mind about a year ago and at that point, at that time, you know, I'd finished university, you know, it was time to start, you know, making life choices and all the serious stuff, like, oh, what am I going to do the rest of my life and all that. So, you know, I was thinking about, you know, family, jobs and I started to compare it with Jesus, with Jesus' life and there were some things that struck me and from my perspective, from what I know, from how I've been brought up, maybe it's just a Nigerian thing, there are two major things that define how successful a man is. One is your career and two is marriage, marriage and a family. And I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if it's just a Nigerian thing, if it's a cultural thing, I don't know. But those are like the two major things that people would, you know, gauge or rate how successful you are. If you're a good career guy but you don't have a family or your family is kind of messed up, you know, it's, you know, if you have everything down, it's like... I started to compare those standards with the life of Jesus. And as far as I know, as far as I could see... Jesus was actually a failure in these two things. I mean, when I say failure, I mean, it's relative. I don't mean Jesus was a failure, but um, basically, he didn't have, Jesus didn't have a job. Now, I, I know this is debatable. I'm not saying he doesn't have a job. Like, doing the work of the Father was a job in itself anyway. But Jesus didn't have a job in the regular sense of a job. We know that he was the carpenter's son and I believe he actually did carpentry work. If I mean along the line somewhere. But as from the time that he was 30, I mean from the time he started his ministry and for the next three years, I don't think he actively participated in like carpentry work. Because at the point where they needed to pay tax and Peter was asking, oh we need to pay tax. He had to tell Peter to go and look into a fish's mouth or something to get to get the money. So I don't think there was any income coming in at that time. So Jesus was what I would call jobless. Okay, I don't want to, you know, the term maybe. But he didn't have that. And I'm not saying... Okay, before I even go there. And the second thing, in the second... I mean, with regards to the second thing. Jesus wasn't married and he didn't have a family in the sense of, Oh, I'm getting married and I'm having children. He didn't have that. So on those two counts, I mean, where do you want to start rating his success? <laughs> where do you want to start rating how successful Jesus Christ was? In this regard, I think that Jesus Christ once again switched things up. Jesus Christ once again changed the game. Because who could you say worked with more purpose in this life, in this 
earth which human being ever worked with as much purpose as jesus did i mean which human being has ever had a clearer vision than jesus did which human being ever worked towards such a certain goal you know with such determination and with such you know single-mindedness as jesus i don't think there's anybody because right from the start this was always like this is why i'm here i'm doing this and he accomplished that 100 percent you know how many people do what they want as perfectly as jesus did so you can't even say it was he lived like a purposeless life because he didn't have a job or wasn't married so i think by living like that jesus actually redefined success and i believe what i've seen from jesus's life is that success is pure and simple pleasing god you know as long as god is happy with you <laughs> I think that's as successful as you can or will ever get like there's no there's no debate for me there's no debate about it and I was, I'm not trying to play down the importance of jobs or the importance of family or marriage not at all because uh, your job is probably the number one tool that you're going to use to fulfill God's call and God's purpose for your life that one isn't even debatable and, and your and marriage Marriage is one of the most powerful things that God has created and which he has given for all of us to partake in. So I'm not trying to play down those things and say, oh, they're not, they're not um, important or we shouldn't put emphasis or make investments in those areas. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is that we shouldn't let those things define who we are. And we shouldn't live lives that are sort of based on those things let me make myself clear as long as you're you know in a marriage that is what god wants as long as you're in a job that is what god wants and as long as you're pleasing god in those things then you're good <laughs> i hope i'm not confusing anybody <laughs> what i'm trying to say here is that success is you pleasing god that's it because on two occasions god declared from heaven that oh this is my son in whom I am well pleased first when jo when he was being baptized by John the Baptist and second on the Mount of Transfiguration that is what I think God really wants from us to be pleasing unto him to do what he wants us to do now that would be having a job and that would be getting married but the way that God wants it not defined by our own standards or defined by societal pressure because i feel i don't know how it is worldwide but i feel like in nigeria or maybe it's in my own little sphere of existence but it's like there's a lot of pressure and especially on these two things a lot of pressure on how it should be so i think we really need to re rethink our standards i think that's pretty much it rethinking our standards and living to please god that's it that's what it is so success isn't having a job and being very you know rich or you know getting a lot of profit or a lot of fame or a lot of coverage based on that i mean that isn't what it is or it isn't having four children and a happy home it's much more than that because if you have those children and if you have that great job and god isn't happy with you then <laughs> it's not going anywhere I really hope I've been clear today and I haven't confused or, you know, brought up any more questions and answers. And I hope this has helped someone somewhere, somehow. And if I've made any wrong um, claims, <laughs> please feel free to correct me. And if you have any personal understanding or if you've had a personal revelation of the person of Jesus Christ, please comment and please share. Iron sharpness iron so <laughs> it'd be great to hear from anybody really and um, I guess I'll see you in part three bye